Good afternoon. Welcome to April. Today is April 1st. I'm not going to play any kind of April Fool's uh, joke on you at all. Uh, maybe you've already had somebody do that to you. My dad was always famous for uh, waiting until I was uh, up first thing in the morning, still sleepy, my brain not really wrapped around what day it was, and he'd pull some April Fool's prank on me um, as I went walking uh, through the kitchen. So, um, it is April 1st. We've begun the month of April already, and I hope that you plan on joining us for tonight's uh, Living Last Supper. Uh, Kathy Liebenguth and the crew have put a lot of work into that. Uh, we'll have communion there as well together. So I hope that you uh, can join us and make that part of your plan. If there's some reason that you are unable to attend or that you uh, do not quite feel safe doing so yet, maybe you're still waiting to get all of your shots, uh, it will be uh, broadcast online. That is my understanding uh, at this time. So uh, let's go ahead and get started, as we usually do, with something from the world's greatest collection of church jokes. And uh, this one is called uh, Three Timer. It says, old Andy Klein passed on, and at the end of his church funeral, someone remarked, as I recall, old Andy attended church only three times during his entire life, when he was hatched, when he was matched, and now when dispatched. <laughs> that was kind of an amusing one, maybe a little corny. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer, though, as we enter into this quiet time with him. We are really here to spend that time uh, hearing his Holy Spirit, so we need to invite uh, that uh, Holy Spirit in, acknowledge its pre presence of the Holy Spirit in uh, just ask for that special outpouring, uh, opening up that avenue of communication between his spirit and our spirit. Almighty God, you have given us so many blessings and so many gifts, and the greatest gifts that you have given us were your son, Jesus Christ, in addition to your love and grace, your son, Jesus Christ, who suffered, he died, but he rose again. And so now you've given us the gift of your Holy Spirit that we may experience transformation in our own lives. We may look forward uh, to that uh, eternal home uh, that will be ours, but uh, we don't have to wait for that either. We know that uh, as we uh, come into this reconciled relationship uh, to you through our faith in Jesus Christ and experience an infilling of the Holy Spirit, we are promised that you uh, set up home with us now. Uh, you're right here with us right now. And so uh, we pray for your still small voice to speak into our spirit now as we go uh, into our quiet time with you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, as you are aware, if you've been joining us, the psalm for this week has been Psalm 23. We've read it from different translations. And so uh, I'm going to read, uh, read it from today, the new revised standard version of the Bible simply titled The Divine Shepherd. This is a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Well, our New uh, Testament reading, or the reading for today, for Thursday, is from the New Testament book, the Gospel of Mark. And we're going to read from Mark chapter 14, verses 12 through 26. Uh, this is the story of the Last Supper. So Mark 14, 12 through 26. And again, I'm going to read from the New International Version translation. The Last Supper. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples telling them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. 
Say to the owner of the house he enters. The teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Well, once again, during this Holy Week, we get all these familiar uh, stories. Uh, this last week of Christ's life, and the Passion, Passion Week, Holy Week. Today, a uh, reading for reflection uh, comes from Footsteps in the Path of Life by Marcus Dodds. Footsteps in the Path of Life by Marcus Dodds. And this is what he writes. <clears throat> the purpose of God in the history of man was accomplished when Jesus breathed his last upon the cross. The cry, it is finished, was not the mere gasp of a worn out life. It was not the cry of satisfaction with which a career of pain and sorrow is terminated. It was the deliberate utterance of a clear consciousness on the part of God's appointed revealer that now all had been done that could be done to make God known to men and to identify him with men. God's purpose had ever been one and indivisible, declared to men in various ways, a hint here, a broad light there, now by a gleam of insight in the mind of a prophet, now by a deed of heroism in king or leader, through rude symbolic contrivances and through the tenderest of human affections and the highest human thoughts. God had been making men ever more and more sensible that his one purpose was to come closer and closer into fellowship with them and to draw them into a perfect harmony with him. Forgiveness and deliverance from sin were provided for them. Knowledge of God's law and will. Thus they might learn to know and to serve him. All these were secured when Jesus cried, it is finished. So I'm going to read that last part again. God had been making men ever more and more sensible that his one purpose was to come closer and closer into fellowship with them and to draw them into a perfect harmony with him. Forgiveness and deliverance from sin were provided for them. Knowledge of God's law and will. Thus they might learn to know and to serve him. All these were secured when Jesus cried, it is finished. Again, that's from uh, Footsteps in the Path of Life by Marcus Dodds. Well, we've come to that point uh, in our time together where we can lift up our prayers. And so I'm going to allow you to do so silently with whatever you have on your heart and mind. And then I will close this out. Let's pray. Dear loving, loving Heavenly Father, you are so uh, good to us. You have accomplished for us what we could never have accomplished on our own. You have opened up the way for us to have eternal life, the way to uh, have our sins forgiven and forgotten by you as though they never occurred. As you have made way for us to be clothed 
not in our own righteousness, but your righteousness, the righteousness of Christ. And you've made this, uh, this gift uh, of eternal life something that we can be living right now and right here today. We can enjoy that intimate fellowship with you as we are setting out to do now, as we've carved this time out each and every day. We can be transformed now. We can live for you today. We can know your mind and your will and your love. And we can know the sweetness of the fellowship with you and with one another. Lord, may we take a full advantage of all the gifts that you have. May we reflect on them deeply during this holy week, this week of passion, this week of suffering and pain and anguish, but this week of great victory. Lord, we lift up all of those who've uh, been lifted up in our hearts and minds. You know their every need. You desire wholeness for them as we do as well. So we leave them in your good and trusting and loving hands, knowing that your everlasting arms are constantly underneath them. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, the Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want, uh, the uh, Scottish Psalter version. So for this uh, Thursday, here's the verse. My table thou hast furnished in presence of my foes. My head, dost the, my head thou dost with oil anoint, and my cup overflows. So I'll read that again. My table thou hast furnished in presence of my foes. My head thou dost with oil anoint and my cup overflows. And we'll have one more verse that we'll read over uh, tomorrow and then the whole hymn, and that will finish uh, that hymn and our time uh, together for a while. So thank you so much uh, for joining me. Hear this uh, benediction uh, once again as you go into your quiet time with God from Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen and amen. We will see you back here tomorrow. Blessings on you.